Good day, everybody, and welcome to our session on science diplomacy and oceans management. It is my pleasure to welcome you all. And before we start, I would just like some house rules for the virtual session that we've got a panel of speakers that will share their presentations on screen, those who have vi uh, visual presentation. And there's also a chat box where I'll be monitoring all the discussions and the questions that will be posed. And you will be able to continue with the discussion on the chat. And the order of the session is that I will set the scene by a short introduction. And after that, I will introduce the speakers and each speaker has been assigned 15 minutes. And after each contribution from the speaker, from the speakers, after the total uh, speech, speeches, we will then have a discussion, a question and answer, and the session will end. It is a 90 minute session. My name is Tandim Gwebi. I'm the Deputy Vice Chancellor for Research, Innovation and Internationalization at Nelson Mandela University, South Africa. This session has been organized by the South African Department of Science and Innovation. As a way of introduction on the science diplomacy and oceans management, I would like, just like to stress the importance of international cooperation in solving global challenges, not only the challenges posed by, with, within our oceans or facing our oceans. It is a reality that no single nation has the resources, capacity, or mandate even to undertake all of the research and effort needed to resolve the questions and issues uh, of our oceans. Cooperation is paramount. If I take an example of the Indian Ocean, for example, closer home, global networks are urgently needed to join forces to resolve the global warming and sustainability issues affecting the Indian Ocean, a region with a population of over 3 billion people. This includes conducting research on the ocean structures and currents and addressing its warming, its changing anatomy, increasing acidification, the stress on the fisheries, changes in oxygen levels, and many more. At all levels in ocean management generally, changes such as pollution or challenges such as pollution, access to resources, sustainable livelihoods of com coastal communities, tourism, transport and, and conservation are some of the key issues. A number of efforts at regional levels are fueled through science diplomacy to operationalize the strategies of ocean management for human development. Also closer home, the Western Indian Ocean region extending up the Eastern coast of Africa has the most serious food security problem on the continent or on the planet. It is estimated that 60 million people in the in the Western Indian Ocean directly depend on the ocean for their livelihoods at a time when the indications are that the Western Indian Ocean is warming faster than the world's other oceans, which impacts all levels of the marine food web. Overfishing, destructive fishing practices, and high levels of pollution are causing the marine environment to deteriorate further. But what are we doing about it? Within the continent in Africa, and in fact, in my own country, at my own university, at Nelson Mandela University, efforts through science diplomacy as supported by its catalytic activities. We are pursuing intensive research to understand and address the key questions of what sustains marine food security. What are the underpinning ecosystems and how do they function in this era of climate change and changing global oceans. We are indeed fortunate to have such catalytic initiative, initiatives, such as the, the SAEU for bilateral research chairs as held by one of our professors, Professor Mike Roberts, who holds a bilateral chair in ocean science and marine food security under the South African Research Chairs Initiative. There is also an understanding that whilst this work requires multinational partnerships, it also requires a transdisciplinary approach. Science diplomacy thus becomes crucial 
for the diversity of approaches and minds in tackling these big challenges. Similarly, the Atlantic Ocean, the second largest of the world's oceans, is a resource shared by all Atlantic nations. And to sustainably manage the Atlantic Ocean as a whole, research is needed and innovation is needed to address its challenges and to further understand its mechanisms. So cooperation becomes key. I would be amiss if I don't mention the opportunity presented by the decade of ocean science. It will be mentioned earlier in the presentation. On 5th December, 2017, the United Nations declared that a decade of ocean science for sustainable development would be held from 2021 to 2030. It will provide a common framework to ensure that ocean science can fully support countries to achieve the sustainable development goals. It is an opportunity that will require engagement with different stakeholders from, to, for partnerships and applications of uh, solutions from scientists, governments, academics, policymakers, business, industry, and civil society. I have speakers in this room who are well equipped to share how transboundary cooperation and science diplomacy have impacted the, the management of our oceans. At this stage, I would like to introduce our speakers, starting with Dr. Miguel Bello Morapu Guertolano, who is the CEO of the Atlantic uh, International Research Center, the ARR Center. And the second speaker is Sigi Gruber, head of the Healthy Oceans and Seas Unit in the Directorate General for Research and Innovation in the European Commission. And the third speaker, I had Vladimir Raya Benin, Executive Secretary of the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO and Assistant Director General of UNESCO. And lastly, I've got Dr. Yona Saleti, Acting Deputy Director General for Research Development and Support at the Department of Science and Technology in South Africa. And now I would like uh, to invite Miguel to come and share his presentation. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much, Sandy. First of all, I would like to thank for the invitation to this uh, round table with these distinguished uh, speakers. And um, the best way to present what is the view of the Center for International Collaboration and Science Diplomacy is to present what we are and what we do. But as we are a very new organization. Well, we want to present first what is our vision, how is the effort that we run to till the creation of our organization, and what are the projects and the activities that we are doing. Air Center is a nonprofit international organization which work in a network which is for, to foster job creation and knowledge-driven economic development. We are based on scientific excellence and targeting to help to achieve United Nations sustainable goals. We have defined several missions, which are uh, protect bays and storing areas, uh, monitoring floods and natural disaster, uh, optimizing the sustainability for fat production, like your aquaculture, protect coastal erosion ecosystems. And we run with a basic scientific agenda, with merge different disciplines like marine resources and biodiversity, healthy and clean oceans, but also um, climate change, data science, and remote science. The creation of the Air Center is a good example of science diplomacy. There has been a long uh, science diplomacy timeline till the creation. Everything started in New York. In 2016, at United Nations, there was a meeting of Atlantic nations to discuss about how to deal in an international collaboration with the ocean global challenges. All that, that was the beginning. Then there was a first high-level ministerial meeting in 2017, which 
uh, was continued in July 2017 in Belém, leading to the Belém Statement between the European Union, Brazil, South Africa, uh, let's say South and North Atlantic Agreement. This uh, conference ended with the Belém Statement was one of the important milestones for the creation of the Air Center. Since then, there was again at the end of 2017 in Florianopolis, uh, a high level ministerial meeting ended with the Florianopolis Declaration and the constitution of the Air Center was in 2018. That means we are just two years old, was created two years ago. We continue with this important high level discussion uh, with uh, ministerial meetings of countries all around the Atlantic and the European Union. We met in Praia in May 2018, in Canary Island, with the ending with the Canary Island Declaration in November 2018, in Lagos, uh, in Nigeria in 2019, again in April, and the last high-level meeting was supposed to be held in May in Philadelphia, in the United States. Due to the COVID, has been delayed, and this is going to happen in October. Then uh, third week of October is going to be full virtual, is going to be the next high-level ministerial meeting of the Air Center to continue defining what, how we perform this international collaboration. In those two years, we grow very much, incorporating a lot of members to our networks. There are countries which are members of the Air Center. Those countries are in Africa. South Africa is one of the most active countries, Angola, Namibia, Nigeria, Cape Verde, Sao Tome. We're now discussing with Morocco, the potential cooperation, Within Europe, it is Spain, Portugal, Norway, UK. Now we're discussing with Germany and Ireland and other countries. In America, Brazil is the most active country. We, we got four offices from Air Center open in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro, Fortaleza, uh, Belém, and we are going to open, uh, well, Bahia, and we are to open Belém in Pará for the Amazonia region. And the, in, the, in the United States, we have big notes at MIT, Penn State University, Philadelphia. We got the UT Austin, Texas, and, uh, and uh, the University of Florida. There are also agreements with research centers in many other countries, like uh, Ghana, Uruguay. That means our networks of uh, uh, governments and uh, research institutions, and also industry dealing with the space is, is being expanded. We got more than 15 countries now. Our goal would be, be more than 20 countries next year. The main headquarters is in Azores, because Azores is in the middle of the Atlantic, somehow center of gravity of the Atlantic Ocean. And we have also uh, offices at the Technology Ministry in Lisbon. The Air Center C, the International Collaboration for Ocean Management, as a with a holistic uh, view. That means we need to integrate various sciences, cannot be only oceanography. We are very much focused to space. We believe that space has a lot of to say to the ocean. We believe very much in space applications. Space is provide synoptic measurements of the whole ocean. And uh, but not only that, also climate uh, science, energy, data science, artificial intelligence. We view this as, as, as global uh, merging of all those sciences. But we also understand that we need not only governments, we need all stakeholders. We are dealing with governments and public institutions, but also with academia and research center with the industry. At the end, we want to help delivering solutions, and it is the industry which can provide uh, uh, operational uh, uh, application. Like, uh, we're dealing with large corporations, but also with SMEs and uh, small companies, and ending with the civil society. We have an exercise to disseminate and to communicate to the people what are the problems that we have and how we want to face those problems. Another view is we have to encompass all geographies. I mean, oceans are very global. Then we are encompassing Europe, Africa, and America for this. And we accommodate local problems together with global challenges. Um, at the same time, we want to be a catalyst. We want to help projects to happen. We don't want to compete with the industry or to compete with the academia. We are not a research center. We are not a company. Then what we do is we help to create projects by federating users putting in contact the users with the potential providers and doing consortia. Many times we are part of those consortia because we also do some technical activities, but always limited not to be competing with the industry and academia who have to do, to do the project. And at the same time, we need to keep our network active. We need to keep this, we organize a workshop, we organize uh, webinars. We have a very successful 
uh, networking Fridays. Every Friday we do uh, a webinar dealing with a different OSEA, OSEAN uh, topic, and it is very successful. We have several hundred attendants from more than 70 countries every week to those, to those uh, uh, webinars. Uh, in addition to that, we host international research centers. In our headquarters, we host an ISALAP. ISALAP is a European Space Agency laboratory to promote Earth observation application for oceans. We hold a secretariat of MBON. MBON is the Marine Biodiversity Observation Network. Then we have activities in biodiversity. And we also host a node for the Geo Blue Planet. In addition, we have important presence on the International Geodesy Network Rivia. We host in, in uh, ASOS a huge antenna to do very long base interferometry for geodesy science for this collaboration. Uh, what are the needs that we are dealing with? The needs are very long. This is an awful uh, uh, slide. I mean, it shouldn't be like that, but it is intentionally like that to see the, the number of problems that we have, number of problems that we want to tackle. Coastal erosion, fish stock protection, optimization of aquaculture, oil spills, plastics, climate change. I wouldn't go to all of them, but this is just to view that we are dealing in a holistic way with all those type of problems. And to deal with that, we really want to to deliver, we want to go to projects. We don't want to be just organizing workshops or doing a declaration, high level minister. It's nice that the minister meets from time to time, but we need to deliver projects, products, solutions. For that, we open two lines, line of small projects, which are project of international collaboration of a minimum of two countries of, the, of our organization. There are these small projects, which are let's say beyond 10 million and large flagship projects. We already started more than uh, 10, about 15 small projects, which are, uh, we organize consortia, we get engaged in consortia for a project of European Union, Horizon 2020, for all type of, of, of international competitions. Um, examples, uh, this e 5 desk this is a desalination project with Spain, Portugal, Mauritania, Senegal, and Cape Verde, which is an internet project. We are running also a project to detect plastic on the sea from space with hyperspectral cameras. This is together with the industry. This is an ESA, European Space Agency project. We run also a project more national. This is SAIL. It's a project of the Portuguese Navy, which is repeating the Maraja circumnavigation voyages exactly 500 years later, and uh, with instruments to uh, study interaction between space, atmosphere, and ocean. And the result of all those experiments are presented at each port of call. This picture is in Rio de Janeiro at the port of call. We did a workshop with the outcome of those results. We also work in Horizon 2020 projects. This is a very interesting one from aquaculture. This is an example of a small projects, but we also target to large framework projects for international collaboration. The most ambitious one, we call it APOS. APOS stands for Atlantic Pole to Pole Observation System of Systems. Pole to pole, because we understand the ocean as a globe from the Arctic to the Antarctic. A system of system, because there is not a unique system which can deliver solution. We need to combine all of them. The architecture of such a system has a space component, an atmospheric component, sea surface, underwater, has a control center, a big data, but the most important one, a user service, where all our partners insert data and deliver solution by using artificial intelligence, mathematical model, we, the, we give to them the opportunity to access those sensors and to access this data. The idea is to, to share between all countries. An example is the Atlantic constellation. We want to complement the ESA Sentinels, uh, European Union Sentinel satellites the, from the Copernicus European Union program is a very key uh, value because we use this data, which is valuable to everybody. Also NOAA and NASA satellite, but we, we need to cover some gaps. Gaps for very frequent data, like every two, three hours. This data for every two, three hours, we only can get that through a constellation. The idea is to set up a constellation of 16 satellites, which will cover the ocean and which will give, will give frequent data. We have eight countries now in the development of this constellation, which is uh, South Africa, Nigeria, Spain, Portugal, UK, Norway, Brazil, and Mexico. The idea is very simple. We understand this is a federation of users. Uh, a constellation is an important uh, uh, budget project for a single country. If you do it with 10 countries, the cost is divided by 10. 
but you get the same profit because when, when the constellation overfly your region of interest, you have the full power of the constellation. This is the type of things that we believe we can do by organizing and federating users. Well, as a summary, the Air Center, we believe is a unique opportunity to develop this international network. We're looking to job creation on the countries, knowledge-driven economic development of the Atlantic region. As I said, being a catalyst, being an engine to do projects uh, in different aspects, small project, big project, targeting always to contribute to reach United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Emphasis is done in these collaborations West and problem solving. Well, this is basically what I, I, I wanted to share. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Miguel. We're now going to invite uh, Siggy to, to share her perspective. Good afternoon to everyone. Thank you, Pandy, for giving me the floor. Thank you to the other panelists to be part of our discussion. Now, uh, I am very quickly going to show how actually we value science diplomacy and ocean management for our own activities and for the ones that we carry out together with our major partner. And Miguel, thank you very much for your presentation to show what uh, actually has been achieved. So first of all, let me remind all of you that we are all coming from the ocean. All forms of life depend on it. It regulates our climate, our weather, it's a hotspot for biodiversity. It provides essential services for food, for energy, for many other medicines. It's a place of well being. It's a place for the blue economy, for trade. And just to remind you that 40% of the EU population lives in coastal areas where the marine environment is interlinked with their culture, with their identity and the sense of belonging. But when it comes as well to look at the global ocean, the ocean we share, but the ocean very often divides us. It's also a place very often of tensions. And that is where science diplomacy, science in diplomacy, diplomacy for science and science for diplomacy, comes really now into action. And so that is uh, why I'm very happy today to talk to you. Let's not forget that the ocean is a public good. We are all responsible, responsible individually and collectively for the ocean's protections and for its health. It's our natural capital. And we should never forget that. We do too often. A value that needs constant replenishing and not depleting. Restoring and protecting our ocean is one of the urgent and defining tasks of our time. I think we really owe this to our future generation. We have, as older people, really this collective responsibility. And I cannot talk to you with not mentioning really now the COVID-19 crisis, which is a wake-up call because fundamental systemic change towards sustainability and resilience needs to emerge from design with sustainable management and active restoration at its core. In recovering from the pandemic, which hopefully we will very soon, and the crisis it has caused, we must reorient our economies, our societies towards our long-term objectives, which are as well sustainable, that we achieve the sustainable development goals by 2030. But an important way societies can collaborate to sustain the ocean is through delivering the ocean's science evidence that is needed to inform the decision-making within and outside national jurisdictions. Delivering this ocean science gives really courage, it needs to give the, the courage to policymakers to take the right decisions. And that is at the core of our discussions. We all know 
working in this field, that ocean science is a very complex endeavor. Tandy, you mentioned it at the beginning, and to Miguel as well. It's costly, it needs coordination, it needs different dis disciplines to work together, it needs data sharing, infrastructure sharing. But it is a globally important forum for science diplomacy. And the ambit of science diplomacy in ocean science is really broad. It includes governmental, intergovernmental agreements that we as policymakers have. And it needs really this blend of top down and bottom up. And I am very happy to show you now a couple of slides and to give you some examples. So one, one of this uh, really uh, blend and, and the, the favorite combination of cooperation between bottom down and uh, top down, bottom up and top down was back in 2013, the Galway Statement on Atlantic Ocean Cooperation, which in a certain way launched off really a, a more legal framework, uh, a diplomacy framework for cooperation. And it's not, I mean, this had been pushed by the science community itself for a long time in different successful projects that uh, one was the, the basin and the Euro basin between the EU, Canada and North America. The, the scientists really worked already together and they were asking the policymakers to put a frame so that this can be blessed as really top down and can be followed by identifying joint priorities which are agreed at a government level together with the scientific community and the science managers and the private sector, but also to follow it up through funding, which particularly when it comes to ocean science is so important. So the response really came or the, the need for this cooperation came really from the bottom up. And we have lifted it up at another level of responsibility. And we did follow it up with commitment and investment. And it led to many different projects. Uh, you probably, many of you will know the Atlantis project or the Atlas project, which have left now a kind of legacy as well. And uh, we have tried to promote the data sharing we have tried to focus on career development throughout the Atlantic. Next slide, please. When we signed the Galway Statement, we could not imagine that and nor predict that it would really lead to a progression to a basin scale initiative, such as the Belém Statement, which also was mentioned by Sandy Yu and by Miguel before. Yet again, it was really this combination of the results emerging from the scientific work and the political leadership in the EU, in South Africa and Brazil to take the momentum forward and to motive political com commitment by signing the Belém Statement. Work is now in progress. Miguel has really put into its center as well, the air center from our side, we have invested for the South and for the North Atlantic, so the Belém and the, the Galway Statement in order of 200 million euros over the last five years. We have a very ambitious now target to reach more than thousand research teams working together on the Atlantic. We have also, because we need to invest in the future of the youth, we have launched off very successfully the All Atlantic Youth Forum, which uh, the youth forum with the youth ambassadors, where they carry forward the torch and the important message, how this is really going to change the life of the communities living on the Atlantic. Next slide, please. We also tried to bring in other countries. So we signed a memorandum, which are based on 
uh, political agreements that we enjoy with those countries, with, uh, with uh, Argentina and with Capo Verde. And we also have now in the making a memorandum of understanding with Morocco. Next slide, please. Uh, the previous one, yes. Now, when it comes to cooperation in the European Union, we, one of our really big policies is the EU maritime policy and its different sea basins. So science diplomacy also came into action in other sea basins. And one particular very good example, and we are very proud of that, is the Black Sea cooperation. We developed together with the Black Sea countries, so that is Georgia, the Russian Federation, Ukraine, Romania, Turkey and Bulgaria and Moldova also wanted to be part of it. They don't have a coast, but they have the interlinkage with the land. We developed uh, over a time frame of two and a half years, and it was complicated. You can I leave leave that to you to imagine that it was complicated in such a complex geopolitical context, and yet. We did overcome that. You see the picture of all the people working together. It led to the Black Sea Strategic Research and Innovation Center, which is the science pillar of the common maritime agenda for the Black Sea and the science forward. And so this is something where we created a framework where we hope that this framework will also structure at national level, the national to be developed uh, marine and maritime agendas, which uh, of course are comparable and which have the same baseline and where this cooperation can now really continue to be successful. We are very, very hopeful of that. We also have now tried to really back it up uh, with uh, uh, investment on our side. And we cannot talk about the European seas without talking about the Mediterranean. We have uh, the beautiful blue Mediterranean where I am actually now sitting. <laughs> I'm talking to you from the Mediterranean. And Trieste is also, is on the Adriatic Sea, which is also in the Mediterranean. So research innovation for blue jobs and growth in the Mediterranean area. We launched that off. We succeeded as well to really involve not only the EU member states bordering the Mediterranean, but also our key partners, our neighbors, which is Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Egypt, uh, Turkey. So we worked uh, Israel, we worked very, very closely with them. And again, we have a strategic research and innovation agenda, but more importantly as well, we launched last year a pilot scheme for a plastic-free healthy Mediterranean, which uh, is uh, now carried forward by the Mediterranean countries, but which is open as well to anyone to join. If anyone would like to see what is going to happen, how, is, how are the Mediterranean countries now really trying to tackle this huge and immense, really in incredible, challenge of the plastic which goes into the ocean and which destroys our ecosystem. So uh, more information can be given to you if you so want. We, I have not put the Arctic, but we also work in the Arctic, which is another example really of great science diplomacy. But let me, because of time constraints, I'm just trying to check the time, also uh, highlight some of our next future uh, steps. We will continue to work on mutual ocean research and observation efforts in the different sea basins. This work will wide ranging, is wide ranging and will include, we constantly have the dialogue, which is the fantastic dialogue we have established in the Atlantic, uh, North and South. And uh, I'm very pleased uh, to, to see Jona because he's one of our key partners in this, dialogue, in this dialogue. We also have Brazil. 
but we continue as well to work now very closely in the Mediterranean where we have established a group of senior officials. Likewise, we have done the same for the Black Sea and we are working very actively to prepare the next ministerial meeting for the Arctic, which will take place in May 21. There will be new shared initiatives, which focus also on capacity building and empowering communities. This is particularly the case for the free sea basins I mentioned, and also particularly for the South Atlantic with our All Atlantic Youth Ambassadors. And we will advance cooperative ocean science in support of the UN decade of ocean science for sustainable development and the 2030 agenda, because the European Union is going very soon to launch a future mission on healthy ocean and water, which we hope will really be a game changer in achieving, in, in cover, in really restoring and working and pushing for a healthy ocean as a life support system for our future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sigi. Um, it's now, we are right on time, and it's now an opportunity to hear perspectives from Vladimir. Okay, I'm trying to share my screen now. I hope it will work. But I hear, I understand that you hear me already now. So yes. if it doesn't work, I will then keep talking because uh, you know I just wanted to make the screen beautiful. That's the only thing. So, but if we have uh, beautiful faces for our uh, um, speakers, that will be probably doing the job. So you know, uh, thank you very much, Tandy, for inviting uh, uh, IUC and myself. And you know, it is very difficult to speak after Sigi and No, because you know, you you, you have to 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 match the the level. It's it's difficult and so Miguel and Ziggy really uh, created a level of discussion that I would like to a little bit uh, to to maintain and first of all uh, also uh, giving given the opportunity I would like to say that um, IUC is, uh, well, when it comes to diplomacy, the United Nations is the platform, global platform for diplomacy that is so important for the future of the world. And uh, I would like to, uh, to say that IUC is the home for ocean science, and at the same time is also the home for ocean science diplomacy. And, uh, you know, but this, this diplomacy is, uh, uh, is going into, into uh, quite practical applications because science diplomacy is required to run uh, the the global observing system with access to to uh, uh, where to areas where authority belongs to different countries. So it is also important that we uh, share the data. This requires diplomacy. Then we have to manage the ocean, and there are new approaches to managing the ocean through maritime special planning, through coastal zone management. This sometimes is transboundary, and this also requires diplomacy. In order to, um, to save lives, we have a tsunami warning system. So, you know, if even countries have problems in their relations, they come together and they work together to save lives under the IUC tsunami warning and mitigation system. So uh, this hard science comes together with quite uh, elaborated uh, uh, diplomacy in our work. And I think this tendency will continue. What is also important to know, it is that in the United Nations system, now there is a, syst uh, well, a division of labor that is emerging and it's getting more productive and more established and there is more cooperation. So the IUC is the home for ocean science. The Food and Agricultural Organization is the place where the management of fisheries and aquaculture is, is led. The International Maritime Organization is where uh, shipping, commerce, uh, and marine pollution is, is, is a very strong focus. United Nations Environment Program, this is where the legislation and monitoring of ocean as environment and management of the environment is, is, is developing. And I can continue the list. I would like to say that when it comes to climate, uh, Convention on Climate Change, Convention on Biological Diversity, uh, even an, uh, uh, International Atomic Energy Agency is contributing with very novel ways of uh, managing the source of pollution and things like this. So this system, uh, despite the current situation, the situation is quite dramatic, 
because you know United Nations is under big stress now uh, and also uh, Sigi mentioned coronavirus this is an additional source of stress but you know ocean remains important and remains uh, a domain of very useful cooperation uh, between countries that is uh, supported by the platform uh, of uh, by United States and once again it is very science intensive but, you know, I wanted to give you uh, a piece of history. Uh, you know, actually, in, in, in addition to introduction of IAC, I would like to state that ocean was very important for diplomacy for the world, particularly uh, uh, almost exactly 75 years ago, after the uh, nuclear bombing of Hiroshima and, and, and Nagasaki. Um, uh, those scientists who participated in the Manhattan Project, they wanted uh, uh, to prevent further use of nuclear weapons. And they started to work on the world constitution. And they came up with an idea that uh, no other state would be able to access uh, uh, nuclear weapons. And of course, others were not very happy with this because it would be just uh, giving advantage to one country. So it didn't work. And there was uh, 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 one letter that came to the proponents of this world constitution from the uh, state of Connecticut of the United States saying that try the ocean. Try the ocean because it is, it's a common heritage. Uh, try the ocean because actually nobody cares. And that is very unfortunate. But this was also a trigger for very interesting discussion um, in, in terms of how we can uh, develop a constitution for the ocean. It was going nowhere until the manganese nodules were discovered. And then immediately after that, the United Nations Convention of Law of the Sea was signed. So uh, the ocean geology actually was very important in uh, uh, striking a, a deal between many countries and moving forward towards uh, a new basically world order in which almost 40% of the area of the planet was redistributed peacefully. So this is the largest change in authority in the history of this civilization that was triggered by marine geology. So this is the United Nations Convention of the Sea, uh, signed in 1982, and still it guides us in how we cooperate in the ocean and how we also cooperate in the ocean science. So let me tell you uh, the second story. The second story actually is about climate change. If you remember um, what was preceding uh, the uh, Paris Conference on Climate in, 2000, in December 2015, um, there were many conferences uh, before, and one of them was in Copenhagen, and the science was already there, and we, people know that we need to save the climate, but unfortunately no decision was taken. And in preparation for the uh, Conference of Parties in Paris, um, there was a huge denial campaign and they capitalized on the fact that the temperatures uh, 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 of, 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 of the surface started to, uh, the, the rise started to slow down. They called it uh, that the global warming stopped basically. But this was just a hiatus in global warming. And because um, we have a system of global ocean observations with uh, Argo floats, uh, that are able to manage uh, to to to, me uh, to measure temperature, salinity, uh, uh, and and the depths, and, and by the movement also the current. We, it was possible for us to show that it's not actually a stop to global warming. It's just the fact that the the heat that is generated by the greenhouse gas effects, uh, the fact related to, to different forms of uh, greenhouse gases, um, uh, started to penetrate into the depths of the ocean. And then we all know that uh, the global warming continued, but the science explained what was the problem and this put back on the rails, the discussions in the COP15 COP and now we have a new universal agreement that uh, uh, is uh, intends to, to save our planet from the global warming. So that is the role of science. Uh, but you would like to, in this particular case, to alert you that, um, of course, we heard many uh, diplomats and ambassadors saying that 93% of the excess heat generated by a greenhouse gas effect in the result of global warming is, uh, is going to the ocean, that 28% of carbon, can you imagine uh, that it is very easy to say so, but it's, it is very difficult to produce this data reliably. And, you know, and this requires a lot of uh, knowledge, a lot of technological development. So this is, um, a very science intensive domain. 
and uh, it requires in adequate investments, as uh, Sigi said. It, and unfortunately, we wasted a lot of money on developing means of self-destructing. We developed, uh, of, of, we also uh, spent a lot of money by sending uh, the money into space, which is very important. But you know, we didn't spend a lot of money on um, on not exploring the ocean. So this, this is what really needs to be done. But coming back to the climate domain, I would like to state that now a consensus, consensus is emerging between uh, ocean carbon scientists that it's not now 28% that ocean because of the warming may be able to adopt, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to absorb less uh, uh, percent of carbon, 22% of carbon. And this is actually a huge change. This may require adjustment of countries' in investments and also countries' contributions. So this is, again, a role of ocean science that uh, um, explains to the world where the focus should be, and how the policy, how the diplomacy should move forward. And then, uh, Tandy already mentioned, uh, Sigi already mentioned uh, the decade of ocean science. This is the ending part of my presentation. I would like to state in the, to, that in 2016, the first world ocean assessment announced to the world that the humankind is running out of time to start managing the ocean sustainably. That is a huge warning for everyone. So what, what do we need to, to manage the ocean? Uh, this was actually on the on the agenda of one brainstorming in the Environmental Oceanographic Commission that took place in January uh, 2016, and we found that in the lack of uh, of an overarching legally binding instrument that Ziggy also mentioned, that would be requiring uh, investment into science, maintenance of science, we need a big campaign that would be developing the capacity of ocean science so that it would serve the world and serve the sustainable development agenda. And then we proposed the United Nations. It was um, towards uh, uh, the second half of 2017, um, a proposal to conduct in 2021, 2030, a decade of ocean science for sustainable development, to conduct it in 2021, 2030. So uh, this decision was taken, it was positive, and the claim was proclaimed by United Nations. And the IUC of UNESCO worked with many wonderful partners, I would say thousands of people, hundreds of organizations, to coin the implementation plan for, for the decade. The plan assumes uh, that we are going to achieve some qualities of the ocean. The sooner the better, but you know, hopefully be before the year 2030. And you know, uh, very recently, I would I don't want to go into the details of this plan, but I would like to say that one of the proposals for us was to add one quality of the ocean, inspiring and engaging ocean. And that is a very important thing, because you know, in order to save the world, in order to save climate, in order to save the ocean, we need a behavior change. And uh, the business as usual is not going to work for us. And you know, science has the, uh, the, the capacity to, to help decisions. Because you know, diploma, diplo, dip, diplomats, they, they, they have to agree on certain things, but they have a clear understanding and objective reality that expressed by science is much easier for diplomats to come to agreements because the, the truth is just in front of them. So now, uh, with the help of many partners, we uh, submitted the implementation plan of the Decade of Ocean Science for uh, uh, as, 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 as a material for the General Assembly of United Nations, the issue 75 that is starting uh, in two weeks time in New York. And uh, we believe that uh, the plan will be exciting for, for them. But I would like to share with you uh, uh, one important thing. So the plan is uh, it represents a framework for cooperation, also a framework for science diplomacy in the domain of the ocean. But uh, what is also important, we need to, to move forward with uh, quite specific things. We need to develop, uh, we need to manage the ocean. And science-based ocean management uh, encompasses several very important domains. We need to observe the ocean. We need to move from uh, just uh, 
sufficiently developed, probably not sufficient, but at least developed physical observations of the ocean to add biogeochemistry, to add biology, to add ecology, add social things, economic things to, to the domain of observations. We need also to uh, create a digital twin of the ocean so there is transparent access to, to all uh, interested people uh, about the information about the past, current and future state of the ocean. Uh, what, is, what is also important, we need to predict the state of the ocean. And this will be very important because, you know, if there is a decision that needs to be taken, then, you know, if you will be able to, if you are able to, well, foresee what is the outcome of that decision, then your decision is much more informed. And then we have to develop scientific means of managing the ocean. That would be maritime special planning. That would be fisheries and aquaculture management. That would be uh, climate adaptation and mitigation, coastal zone management. And uh, the most important thing, the most important message from me to you is that it has to be a system. Uh, it means that, you know, the science has to be focused on not only sounding the alarm, and science, ocean science is now able to sound the alarm where needed, but the solutions part of the ocean science still very much needs to be uh, further developed. And that is exactly the idea of the decade. The decade is going to be largely, uh, uh, likely the largest campaign in environmental sciences, at least in oceanography for sure. And it will be a transformative uh, uh, campaign uh, enabling the science. And what is also important, you know, we uh, analyze the state of ocean science, the capacity. And I would like to state that we, uh, that unfortunately, uh, particularly in Africa, except South Africa, the capacity is insufficient. The capacity is insufficient in small island developing states. So in addition to enabling the cutting edge of ocean science, you need to really invest into the capacity and, and not only invest, you know, like you pay and then you enjoy that some, some knowledge. Uh, people in the developing countries in Africa will have to, to really embrace and, 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 and possess the capacity and start developing this themselves. So this is one of the most important goals of the decade. So no one is left behind. So uh, the website of the decade is very simple, oceandecade.org. So there will be very soon a call for action, uh, but this is not just uh, a typical call for funding. It's the call for participation. And I think uh, for the first time in history, we have a unique opportunity to, to, uh, to work together using science diplomacy. And the science diplomacy was behind this to develop the science we need for the ocean we want. So that's that's uh, uh, the intention, and uh, very happy to answer questions in the uh, discussion part of the panel. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, thank you very much, Vlad. Um, we we are now going to the next uh, our last speaker, Dr. Iona Saleti from the Department of Science and Innovation. Over to you, sir. Um, good day. Thank you very much for the invitation from our department and also for the exciting presentations that have been given by the uh, colleagues. And let me continue with the next slide just to share with you what my um, framework of discussion will be. I want to frame the question. I want to also focus the presentation because I am the only one speaking from a national perspective. The rest are global players, the European Union at the regional level, AIR at a global level, and the UNESCO at a global level. So I can't compete with them. They are mega players, I'm only coming from a moderate state, uh, and therefore uh, the views presented here may not be as exciting as the big ideas that the colleagues have shared. Uh, and so, uh, that is the template, and let me move on uh, to the next discussion. So far, in our discussion, we have taken diplomacy for granted. We haven't actually looked at what it is. So here, I attempt to just focus on what diplomacy is before we get to science diplomacy. And the reasons why I'm posing this is to understand that diplomacy comes in different forms, and therefore, the participants must be aware 
of what is it that they're getting into an agreement with or what is it that they're participating in. Uh, and uh, I have just chosen 10 of those areas. There are many more uh, around that, but you would see some of them is just uh, don't engage in anything that is uh, uh, problematic or we will use the powers that we have to get you to do what you want, or we use the money, or we ignore you, but we'll send our propaganda to your country uh, and persuade people in your country to follow us. Uh, or we will, maybe this is a people to people on cultural as number five, and then you can go on through all that. But when we come to science diplomacy, I don't think that it is uh, always neutral. It is also loaded with different uh, agendas, and they could be economic, they could be digital and all that. So in entering these activities as a country that is coming from the South, we normally have to take care and cautions that we enter into a relationship that will also be beneficial to us. So that was just important to frame this so that we do not take science diplomacy as neutral. Uh, and of course, I like the World Academy of Sciences, which emphasizes the point that everyone else has been saying that we need this science diplomacy now, and that uh, the demand for it is growing, but it has to be effective partnership and not a one direction. So when we look at the capacity of Africa, which is uh, lower, how do we engage into an effective partnership? within that kind of things. So it is good to draw them in, but are we giving them the capacity to be able to draw in? So as we look at these issues of science diplomacy, we must be aware also of what it entails as we move forward. Next slide. And of course, everyone has been talking about the mischief. What is it that we are trying to solve? Beginning with uh, uh, Dr. Mwebi, the chair, and everyone else has looked at that. So I will quickly just go over that. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, this is a case that has already been made, but the role of science uh, in terms of that is to deepen understanding and provide solution to where we're going. The, therefore, the context, uh, just this slide was, uh, I've already made the point that we're the only ones speaking from a national perspective and the rest are speaking from a global. Now, from a national perspective, we as South Africa are actually an ocean country. From the statistics that you can see, we are surrounded by the Indian Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, and the Southern Oceans. And if you look at the kinds of uh, kilometers that we have uh, from one end to the other, that is quite immense. But we also have more of the sea uh, and ocean than the land that is under our court. So we definitely have an imperative. It is not a choice that we should engage in this discussion with uh, other countries. Next slide. Um, yes, yeah, so th this is just about the space. The next slide. This is an important part as we uh, look at this oceans in a certain extent have also been part of our geopolitics. Now, as you can see from where South Africa is positioned, we have um, about just 4,000 kilometers, 4,600 kilometers to Antarctic and maybe 8,000 kilometers to Argentina uh, and, and uh, Australia. So, we are positioned in such a way that we need to uh, play a role in this area. So the context in terms of the geopolitics is important for us. The South African government has developed a national development plan in which it has given us various scenarios up to 2020 and the oceans and has been part of a big part of that national development plan. We've come up with a new white paper from uh, uh, last year, and we're developing a decadal plan on that science plan and issues of climate change 
and global change are important into that white paper. So it is an important point that uh, a lot of us have been talking about solutions. So our department has moved from being the Department of Science uh, and Technology, the Department of Science and Innovation. So there is something that is important around that word of innovation is to provide solutions even to the ocean challenges. For us, we are lucky that we, our marriage with the Department of Higher Education now has come together. So we can combine resources between the DSI and the HAT to work together towards consolidating our platform. The long standing economic and social environments aggravated by COVID-19 doesn't make it easier for us to go forward. We have to learn to live with COVID-19. And, and so well, we, we are planning to move on with the decadal plan. All right, let's move on to the next one. That's just the national agenda. And we have a national strategy. It is on the basis of these things that I have mentioned that um, we as a country are springing from strong interest to participate in diplomatic activities around science areas. And we have a plan which projects national interest to which we then work towards to. So we do not participate in international cooperation from just a choice. We have a roadmap and we use that roadmap to interact with everyone. Thank you. Can go to the next one. And these are some of the issues, the areas in which we focus uh, our work. It's about oceans, marine ecosystems under global change, earth systems observations, uh, ecosystems, biodiversity and biodiscovery, innovation and development and human enterprise. And that is an important element because it is the anthropogen uh, causes that are causing us to look at all these challenges. So this is where the cover, and this is the agenda that we have, it is this agenda that we interact when we engage in uh, diplomacy. Next slide. Uh, and within some of the activities, we are beginning to move away from just merely science and uh, to begin to see how do we apply this science that we have towards the improvement of the national economy. And so we have a nation's economy uh, to which we participate as researchers to contribute to that in areas that are outlined above, such as marine transport and manufacturing uh, and going all the way to research, technology and innovation. And this is a national program. Now to go into long-term research activities, we have uh, activities that we engage with international relations I and mean, with international countries. And what I've put here is an array of uh, instruments that we have put in the oceans to begin to attend to what uh, uh, Vladimir had spoken to, the chemistry, the physics, uh, around the oceans. And so we have uh, the RAs, ASK, the, uh, the Samba, uh, that's from Brazil and the Southern Coast. And this particular area is very exciting because if we succeed in all these RAs, we will cover quite a huge uh, area up to the Antarctic and up to Brazil in terms of building a science, multidisciplinary science in different areas, including biodiversity. And so we have planted uh, instruments and activities, as you can see, with the ship-based robotics and remote modeling. We can move on. So for the South African commitment, it's a long commitment. It starts long before uh, even the era of freedom in South Africa. So we are building on a strong tradition of scientific research within the Southern Oceans, Indian and Atlantic. So as we engage with partners, we know we are a developing nation, but we have sufficient uh, research base that we can then use to interact and develop further on that. An example, of uh, that is our engagement with the Bellum statement and the, uh, and, uh, and, and, and the others that have been put in there as a way forward. We can also move on to the next one. 
and uh, there's been talk about fisheries and all that. So we also are already collaborating on fish movements using telemetry and others to make sure that our work in this is guided by science. Some of the robotics that were developed to measure the carbon sinking in the Southern Oceans have been remodeled to begin to help us in the um, model uh, on the evaluation and monitoring of fish movements so that we can then use science in order to control the fishing and the activities. And we are cooperating, you can see the footprint uh, and how the players that we cooperate with in that area. We'll move on to the next one. It's another work uh, that signifies South Africa's growing. We are keen to build a research infrastructure around the country. And there are quite a number of those research infrastructures. What I have here is only one as an example uh, of the research infrastructure. We have set up centenary sites around the coast to be able to do multidisciplinary research. We have invested in a few equipment such as helicopters and a plane to assist us with that. It is these things that we bring towards international cooperation as our contribution to the work as other partners also contribute the different instrumentation. We can move on to the next one as part of that. Then we also on the Indian Ocean, we participate in the Indian Ocean Rim Association. Um, I have lost my presentation <laughs> uh, from uh, that point of view. So I, uh, Uh, how is it happening? Okay. Uh, all right. I will continue with the presentation because uh, I've, uh, I've gone to my laptop. So you can listen to me as I continue with that. So in that area, we have a research team in the Indian Ocean Rain Association and work closely. And our ICR department is very supportive in championing this work. We have... Uh, listed thematic areas that we're working with at that level uh, from climate change, oceans, marine or ecosystems, biodiversity, and also we've participated in the uh, research expedition with the AOC as well in that area. The, I have a map, unfortunately you can't see it, but we are making an effort as South Africa to work with other African countries on our research activities as a way of building capacity within Africa. So we see ourselves as playing that role. And you can see in there, there would be Mozambique, there's Madagascar, seashells, all the way up to Angola and Namibia, which we will hope to draw into the Bellum statements. We have many universities and we've built many institutions who have built up international relations across. But one of the examples that we seem to like is that of the semester. We have a university on the ship, on their galas too. And the numbers have been growing, but what is exciting for us is to see the transformational role of this activity. We have participants from the University of Venda, Fortea in this activity. So showing that South Africa is transforming its profile of researchers uh, from the disadvantaged black universities. I have, for, towards the end of my presentation here, indicated some of the new initiatives that we're involved in. We are cooperating on the South-South in the Atlantic with Brazil and the Argentina, hopefully Angola and Mozambique, as a, a way of for creating a consolidated basis for us to participate in other activities. We also participate in the BRICS Ocean Science Group, and we meet every year, and we of joint projects that we're beginning to undertake. And then the Bellum statement, Sigi has spoken to us quite adequately, uh, and also the partnership with the Galway. Uh, and this particular has given us an all Atlantic Ocean Research Forum. Very dynamic, very exciting, where we are consolidating the gains from the Galway and also looking at how that influences our going forward. We have participated in the, in the activities of uh, the decade of the oceans in the Africa, 
uh, IOC, but we have also participated in the South-South contribution to that by uh, through the Belem uh, statement and Brazil hosted such a workshop. Having come through all this, the important element that we need to underscore is that this work requires a lot of investment in the infrastructure, in the, this is scope of work that we have as South Africa. The area that we have is huge. We cannot work on it alone. In terms of the needs, we need databases, we need all that, uh, 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 and we also need cooperation. So I have the last slide, which uh, indicates some of the uh, questions that I'm posing. How effective have the partnerships been for us in South Africa? We believe that South Africa has had a bigger footprint in global science because of the interactions that we have. We also think that our science internally within South Africa has grown and deepened because of the participations that we have been engaging in. We also see that South Africa has a science and innovation office in Brussels. So we are not just sitting in South Africa, we have a centennial post within the context of Europe to help us channel and chat our way through. We've looked at the bottom statement, but looking at uh, way forward in other agreements, we need to tighten these objectives so that the interests and the benefits do also accrue to countries such as South Africa and other African countries. We need to build on our strengths as, as a country, but also as a continent, we do have a young generation that we need to invest in, in the development of human capital. The pooling of resources in research and data mining is crucial. We have to widen the participation of participants, especially from Africa, in the stewardship of the oceans. Sharing information, platforms, scientific research, and the rest are important for us, especially in the wake of living with COVID-19. I thought I should just show you some of the excitement that we're generating among the young people. This is the semester course, just as they in learn, they also enjoy themselves. And I think that we should also learn to do the same. As we tackle these solutions, we must find joy in doing them. Thank you very much. This is a perspective from a national, uh, and therefore it may not uh, bring to you all the big ideas, but we are involved in most of these acti activities and we'll make sure from our side that we continue towards bringing along other African countries uh, to participate in that. Our universities, I know that uh, do keep a 5% open to certain countries members to, to be part of these activities. So uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, and uh, we hope that we will all contribute greatly to the decade of the oceans and realize our global sustainable goals for a healthy ocean. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Saleti. Uh, we do have time for, for a discussion and uh, we will be taking uh, questions. Um, the time that we have left now is 20 minutes. It's actually 19 minutes. So I will be uh, inviting questions from the floor. No, no questions from your side. In fact, while we're waiting for people to ask questions, I've, I've got a, a question for Siggy. Um, Siggy, you mentioned something about, uh, in fact, even, even uh, Dr. Saleti, you mentioned something about the youth ambassadors. I'm very much interested in uh, the, the, the program and whether, how long has it started and uh, how many countries participating and how can we um, expand the program, particularly within uh, areas where it hasn't been uh, uh, taken up. Sandy, uh, shall I start with... Siggy, uh, uh, would you should start. Yes, please. So, um, we have long... So, last year, we had this idea 
Yes, thank you very much. As Sigi was saying, we started almost two years ago. Uh, the idea was conceptualized in the first All Atlantic Forum held in Brazil. Uh, and then uh, last year, when we met in uh, Galway, the countries came with uh, nominations. And so these young ambassadors uh, came from quite a number of countries from the north and from the south. I can't just give you the number, but uh, for South Africa, we had three. And for you, uh, Madam Chair, you'll be happy that we had a, a student from your university as a young ambassador. Uh, and so the idea is that every two years, we should expand the program. And so we are now in the process of recruiting new ambassadors. Ideally, if we didn't have COVID-19, they would have been trained at a university. Uh, Nelson Mandela as part of that. But we'll wait and see what the situation might be. We will continue to expand them and uh, make them grow in terms of where they're going. They normally work on projects. And this particular one, which was an advocacy area, how would they run advocacy campaigns? Uh, and the exciting part from South Africa was that they used indigenous knowledge and the stories around uh, indigenous knowledge so that they can link up with communities and explain where it's going. Thank you. Um, Vlad, um, I see you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Tanji. Just to add a, a very simple thing, that the early career ocean professionals will be a very important element of preparation and conduct of the decade of ocean science for sustainable development. They will be actually designing, and this is not to, supposed to be only mentorship, this will be equal cooperation between generations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, Vlad. Um, as a follow-up for, for, on, your, on your comment, Vlad, I want to ask you about the implementation plan for the decade. And uh, I know you said the important thing is uh, participation, but uh, with many countries, particularly within the continent, with the African continent, participation sometimes requires a lot of funding. And uh, whether there will be uh, partnerships or joint ventures or consortia that can join hands together in terms of uh, funding the participation in, in the decadal plans. Is there, is there such a, a plan, a, an opportunity? Yes, you know, we are trying to, uh, as you understand, to move forward uh, probably the largest campaign in ocean science. And uh, this, uh, as you started to, uh, to explain in the beginning of the session, is beyond capacities of uh, any nation or any organization. So uh, the decade was proclaimed by United Nations within structures and resources. It means that United Nations is not able to pay uh, for participation. So uh, our task is double, not only to design the science, but then to make this design so attractive and exciting. So there is interest in the, in the uh, funding circles to, uh, to, to fund that. That is very important for, for Africa as well. And we hope to organize a conference uh, uh, on the kickoff of the decade of ocean science in Africa. And we are hoping that it will be possible for us to work with the African Union, this African Development Bank, and then, uh, uh, and now in the current situation, maybe we should consider that part of the conference will be virtual, like the conference we are having now. 
so uh, it will be a con continuous unrolling of, of an increasing of scale of the work on the decade with uh, also with very much focus on Africa. So no specific solutions, but on the 15th of October, we are going to uh, announce a call for action. This call will include a request to supply to us ideas about larger uh, elements of activities in the, in the decade, which are called programs and also contributions. So with that, we will start moving forward. Hopefully, mm -hmm. uh, despite the situation with the coronavirus, there is also one very important ethical consideration. Can we continue at the same pace when the whole world is suffering from the coronavirus? So mm -hmm. we are also mm -hmm. moderating our uh, ambitions, uh, trying not to be in the way of some uh, important developments in the domain of ocean health, excuse me, human health, but, uh, you know, but and nevertheless, uh, there will be hopefully some very important funding and it will go to developing countries, it will go to early career scientists. So that, that's the intention. Mm, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Siki, you, you want to add to something? You can hear me now? Better. Yes, we can hear yeah. you. Please go ahead. Thank you. I want to add to uh, um, South Africa going to uh, launch, uh, we are going to organize the next uh, forum for the All Atlantic. Uh, this so fortunately your line is very bad Siggy. and really so Siggy, unfortunately, unfortunately, your line is very bad. It's very difficult to hear uh, your contribution. Perhaps if you can put it on the chat box and I can read for the audience. And um, yeah, while you're doing that, I would like to, to ask um, Miguel if you've got any, any further comments. Perhaps what I would like to hear is about the, the role the role of um, Earth observation and uh, particularly interested in, uh, in satellite um, issues along, I mean, in, uh, in solving our problems within the coast and uh, your involvement in that and how we can strengthen partnerships further in that area. Yes, as I said before, satellites are quite important for the ocean problem because give a synoptic view. You can have a global big areas. Uh, you have mm. to combine that with local sensors. We have to combine that with uh, gliders, automatic vessel, voyages. But the satellite is unique given this global view. For us, satellite is a critical element for ocean uh, solution. We already have very good uh, satellite programs. The European mm -hmm. Union is uh, having Copernicus with the Sentinel, which gives data for free all around the world with very high quality, with the radar, optical, all type of data. This is very sophisticated, but it's not enough. We really want to go further. And uh, the gap is now in the frequency. There are many ocean phenomena with a very short time scale. Then you need sometimes very frequent images. And for that, like upwelling issues or other type of problem, or even uh, disasters like uh, uh, a quick flooding that you need an image uh, very fresh. Then the only way to do that is very large constellation. That's why we're moving toward this constellation. It is done with the small satellites. The precision of the data is not as good as the sentinels, but, but you complement with the frequency. The fact that you have so frequent images for the scientists is sometimes very valuable. And this combination is, is crucial. I would like also to point out what was said about uh, education and, and students. At the center, that's an important topic. I didn't mention before because of the short time we have, but we opened a 60 scholarship for PhD students in an international collaboration between different countries universities Basically, we can combine a Portuguese university with a with university in Brazil or in the States, so that we develop those 60 uh, PhDs in areas which is blue economy, uh, health, and the influence of the ocean problem on the health, which now, unfortunately, is a very hot topic. 
then uh, we are also deeply involved in the in education and PhD for students. Mm. Mm. Yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, for the audience, I'd like to read what uh, Siggy was trying to say. She wanted to share that together with South Africa, they've hosted, they will organize the next All Atlantic Ocean Forum on the 3rd and 4th of December. Mm. The All Atlantic Youth Forum ambassadors will also be trained back to back to that event and more information will follow shortly. And uh, Professor Sele or Dr. Saleti, uh, would you like to comment in the closing? We've got a few minutes and I would like each one of you to make a closing comment um, about the trans, not just about the transboundary uh, cooperation, but perhaps opportunities and uh, maybe now the time for call for, for further strengthening of partnerships and uh, action. Um, thank, thank you very much. Your question is very appropriate because we will be hosting the All Atlantic Ocean Research Forum on the third and the fourth. So we'd like uh, the participants in this uh, to spread that word. The EU has already sent out uh, a call to place this on people's agendas. And it is in the context of this that we as South Africa see um, the interactions with the wider global community as essential for growing our science within our context. It, it is essential not only for human capital development, but also to pull together. The last question you posed to Miguel around the satellites. We are already participating in that work. And I think Nigeria is as well. They have that capacity. So we would want to grow that. How do we move from the small satellites that we are able to place there and contribute to the bigger work and then take uh, 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 cognizance of the results that are coming. So to be able to achieve that, we need to strengthen those relations that we have. In the um, ocean arrays that we have around, there are many countries that participate in that, the United States and some European countries, uh, and so we would need to want to find out how would we structure an international partnership around the Southern Oceans? Because we have a natural laboratory given to South Africa with the three oceans. Yes. Mm. And, and how do we use such a natural uh, gift to yes. mobilize the globe, the whole world to participate in that? Because what's happening in the Southern Ocean does not only have affect South Africa, it affects everyone. So I thank look forward to strengthening that. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Vlad, I'm gonna give you a, a minute or, uh, yes, a minute for you to make your closing comments. Thank you very much, Tandy. So ocean is currently sick, we know that. So, and uh, the way to deal with the ocean in the future is to move to the integrated <laughs> ocean management. Uh, the, that, excuse me, that also includes not only the science, but also ethics, and that would lead to object, object, objectivity as well. And so we hope very much that the Decade of Ocean Science will help us to provide the science basis for the better world, uh, to save the ocean and also to make people better. So, uh, and, and I think this is spilling over the ocean science domain into domain of sustainability and future of our planet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vlad. Uh, Miguel, I'm going to give you a minute also to make your final closing comments. Yes, has been said by Sigi, Vladimir, and, and Jonah. We have global problems, means global solutions, means international cooperation. It's not an option, it's, it's mandatory. For that, we need to start sharing data. Has been also said, there are even within countries, an institution is not sharing data with, the, with, the, with institutions from other city. We have to go out of this problem and share data all around the, the oceans, not just the Atlantic where we are working because the Atlantic problem is the same as the Indic and the same as the Pacific. We have to share this data and also federate. There are many assets. We have to federate the assets to be global solution. We need fusion of data and uh, we, federate, we federate the assets, we get better solution. If we federate the users, we are more effective, we are cost effective. 
for the solutions. This is the way we have to move. Thank you. Thank you. Sigi, are you able to speak now? Otherwise, I will read on, on your behalf. Okay, I think the connection is still bad, but her closing comments, um, she's saying that from EU perspective, they fully support a systems approach and to look much more into all the interfaces and we need to work with the people on land, we need to change the behavior of people. Everyone needs to become a steward of the ocean through cooperation sharing and active citizenship. I think with the, those are the, the, the that's just sums it up for everything that has been said uh, during this session. Uh, that this is actually a, another call for action and another call for participation, and acknowledging the important work that has been done through international cooperation. And uh, with those few words, I'd like to thank you, panelists for the amazing work that you've, uh, you've done. And um, we look forward to further cooperation and further engagements with you. There are endless opportunities that are, that are offered and presented by, through our oceans, but also through transdisciplinary approaches, not just for oceans research, but also for oceans and, uh, and people for, for human mm -hmm. development. And uh, with those few words, thank you very much once more. And thank you very much uh, to the organizers of the session and to the Department of Science and Innovation of South Africa. And from my side, this is the end of the session and uh, we shall continue the conversations outside the session. Thank you.